morning and welcome to St. Andrews. It's a pleasure to have you here on our special Nativity Skit Sunday, as you can tell. It really does come down to the very last possible second when it comes to this, but I am very excited. See, so you have all our technology ready. Maybe we should turn up that TV during this during, during yeah. service. Red button right on the uh, green button on the uh, remote if you want. Great. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Now is the time to wake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your life, of your saving help, and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. I will remind you, um, please do wear your mask if at all possible today, um, and um, we, won't, we won't be singing during the carols, during the skit, but there will be some, so we can maybe hum along quietly. Um, please do be seated. We pray the opening prayer together. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Do you like the third candle? It reminds us of John the Baptist as we celebrate Advent. People of God, return. You are called to be God's own. From the mountains, announce the good news. God comes in justice and peace to all who follow his ways. You are God's children. Lord, make, make us one, one in the peace of Christ, today and forever. Amen. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness, and he will dis disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Turn to us again, O God our Savior, and let your anger cease from us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Show us your compassion, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your salvation is near for those that fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, may Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. And in our song we praise the Lord. Our song this morning is led by Pauline. Thank you. We're reading Psalm number 126. And I will do the verses in normal print and would you please read the verses in bold when the lord restored the fortunes of zion then were we like those who dream then there was a mouth filled with laughter and a tongue with songs of joy then said they among the nations the lord has done great things for them the lord has indeed done great things for us and therefore we rejoiced Restore again our fortunes, O Lord, as the riverbeds of the desert. 
those who sow in tears shall reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed, will come back with shouts of joy, bearing their sheaves with them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from John um, 1, from 6 to 8, and then 19 to 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is a testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks Lord. Lord. It's my great pleasure to present the Nativity skit. Um, if you would like to find a place where you can see a little bit better, especially for the kids, feel free to move around, find a good spot. We will see a bit of set up. Will the kids come up and we'll maybe take a part of the Nativity? <laughs> Um, 
Hello everyone and welcome to this year's Nativity Play by the Sunday School. It has been a challenge, as you can imagine. Uh, first of all, finding enough people who can get here for one reason or another. Um, a lot of people are subject to different quarantine regulations, uh, so sometimes the choice is not theirs to make. So very grateful to everyone who has made it. Um, and we have an amazing cast of, I think, six people actually, which is incredible. And we have one person who's going to hopefully, technology willing, join us via Skype as one of the wise people. Um, so anything might happen with that one. So just uh, have a sense of humor and uh, be patient with us. The theme of this year's Nativity Play centers around, of course, the pandemic and what a Nativity Play might have looked like if there had been a COVID pandemic at the time in Bethlehem uh, when Jesus was born. So this uh, may need a bit of eking out with your imagination, it may need a bit of patience, but it's all done with a lot of love and heart and enthusiasm, uh, and everyone will be very committed. So um, over to the Sunday School. God, you need to switch on the sound. I thought I was God and all powerful. I created everything. So, doesn't that mean I also invented Zoom? Yet, this Zoom seems to defy my power and do its own thing. How strangely similar this is to humankind. I've been calling you to meet, and all you do is send me links to meet you like this? Well, I travel a lot and I have to self isolate. Particularly, particularly around you, as you are older than the rest of us. Uh, Gabrielle, I can't see you. Turn on your video. Oh, that's better. Good to see you. Finally, now we are connected. God, we have a huge problem on Earth. Tell me all about it. All the sinning and naughtiness and shenanigans. There is no end to it. And... The stuff they dream up. If I had known that one little bite of an apple could lead to this much trouble, I would have put a fence around that apple tree. I mean, what was I thinking? I keep on asking myself, why didn't I put a fence around the apple tree? God, we have talked about this so many times. Can we move on? I need to talk to you about a serious situation. Yes, move on. I agree. All this Old Testament stuff is old and impossible. I want new hope, a new whole covenant. So I have a plan to send my son to Earth. We need to, to sort things out. Oh, that's not the problem I had in mind. Oh, oh, all you can say is oh? I thought this was a great plan. It is a great plan, but that's not the problem we had in mind. We have a more immediate issue, COVID. COVID. Mm. Oh, you cheeky angels. I know you do our acronyms down there at Angel HQ, and you love to tease me. Let me try to guess. C-O-V-I-D. Cake, orders, virtually impossible to deliver? There's a problem on Earth with cake? No, no, no. Ah, all right, let me try again. No, no, COVID is not cake. It's a bad thing. So it's running out of cake. There can be no heaven without cake. No, seriously. COVID is a disease that is killing people all around the world. And so is the Old Testament. All that bloodletting and revenge isn't doing anyone much good either. Have you actually read the Old Testament? It's full of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth which leaves everyone blind and toothless. So it's time for a new covenant and a whole new testament. Yes, I agree, but God, we really need to fix COVID like right now? Then can we do the new covenant thing? Yes, yes. I trust you, baby. The only way to show how serious I am is to send my son to Earth incidentally. That is my one and only son. I have to go, so I leave it to you, angels, to sort it all out. I want him there before this year. How about the 25th of December? And as for you, your cake problem, 
I trust you down at Angel HQ to fix it. You're not my angel for nothing. Speak later, see you, and bye. Oh my goodness, that went well. Now I've got to deal with COVID and the birth of the Messiah. This is going to be an unconventional nativity. Because, in fact, I have been sent by God. Ha ha. Next you're going to say you're an angel with wings. But you still got to wear a mask. Well, actually, I am an angel with wings. <laughs> well, frankly, nothing surprises me these days. If there's something I've learned from this pandemic, it's to expect the unexpected. I have some very important and unexpected news for you. First of all, I need you to bring Joseph Herbert Throth to you. I have an important announcement for you both. No way. We can only meet two in a room. Is the rules here in Galilee. But I have an important announcement that concerns you both. I need you both together. Well, you will have to announce your announcement to me first on my own, and then go tell Joseph. I'm an angel. Yes, we've established that. Get on with it. I've come with some good news. Great, about time. We certainly could do with some. Businesses are closing. We can't go to the pub to the cafes or to the cinema. We're feeling pretty glum. Oh, I was told you were a modest girl. I am, but little is known about my early life. I'm a mysterious lady. Well, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. You will be with child. You will be with child and give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus. The Holy One will be called the Son of God. That's great. I am the Lord's servant and all of that, but couldn't you have chosen an easier time? Right, that's all. I've told you. I've done my job. And now you know. So I'm off. I've got to get this night COVID nightmare sorted out. Typical guy. <laughs> Not quite. What do you mean? 
not quite. Dad's proving a problem. Joseph still doesn't know yet. He's either in quarantine or observing social distancing rules, or Joseph just plain asleep, meaning that asleep. There's your answer. Come on, you should not be a problem. You're an angel. You're the good old dream here. For heaven's sake, pop into his head and straighten his thoughts. And then there's a matter of getting them to Bethlehem, where Mary is so heavenly pregnant. Oh well, that's easy. You said that my nice, plush, and jolly comfy Rolls Royce. I think we can splash out and treat them a little. I want the mother of my son, my only son, to travel and comfort. There's only one chance of this after all. I see, but... No buts. Now, what are you standing around for? Rush him off. The god Rolls Royce is going to look out of place. Cars aren't planned for another 1,800 years. Not to mention roads. Mary can't go on public transport either, as it's a big infection risk for an expected mom. So it will just have to be um, a donkey. <laughs> Go away. We are closed. Can't you read the sign? There's a pandemic. You should stay at home. You're out and about knocking on doors and spreading diseases. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Well, we really need somewhere to stay, and everything is closed. Do you have a certificate? Uh, no. We are from out of town. We, we didn't have time to get a certificate or anything. Uh, do you have a banana? What? Uh, a banana? Um, no, I don't have a banana. Who wants a banana? Nobody wants a banana. I have a banana, so open up. I could eat it and go right away. No, don't eat it. Uh, I'll, t I'll take the banana. Thank you very much. Uh, what, you've never seen a crocodile uh, ha with a banana craving before? Oh, you really are a crocodile. That's... Unexpected? Oh, do you have a problem with my unexpected crocodile look? What can we expect these days? We live in surreal times, honey. We have to, so what are you doing to keep up? Wow, but why on earth would you dress as a crocodile? Well, why would you not dress as a crocodile? Get surreal, lady. It's surreal times. Actually, the crocodile is scary, so it frightens away the germs. Also, the crocodile is armor-plated, and it also keeps the germs out. And germs don't like green. It actually makes a great deal of sense being dressed as a crocodile. Germs don't like green? Since when? Uh, since I said so. Oh my word! You are pregnant, darling! And pregnant during a pandemic. That is pretty surreal. Well, I can see that you've been busy. No, no. It's not like that at all. This is not my child. Ooh, the plot thickens. That's rich coming from a guy in a crocodile suit. So, who is the father? This 
is the son of God. Uh, the son of God? Are you sure? I mean, did you not have a scan? Wait, no. There's no scan technology for another 2,000 years. This is the son of God. There is no doubt. Oh my goodness. You guys are totally surreal. I mean, wearing a crocodile costume is nothing in comparison to telling everyone you have God's child. I mean, I'm loving you guys more and more. Look, the hotel is closed, but I can give you the barn. It's basic, but it's cozy and full of love. And, hey, it's a surreal place for these crazy surreal times. A barn? Really? We'll take the barn. That's a deal. Are you seeing this? There's a bunch of people up there in the sky. There's an awful lot of them. Is it is a gathering like that even legal? Well, it doesn't look like a lot of social distancing is going on. It looks like a bunch of angels. It's not a bunch. It's a gaggle of angels. No, it's not a gaggle of angels. Uh, it's a parliament of angels. Or is it a chorus of angels? Guys, it's a host of angels. Ah! He said it's a ghost of angels! No, I said host, not ghost. And am I glad to find you, shepherds? I've been looking for you guys everywhere. But this is totally absurd. You really have taken social distancing lark to the extremes. I'm not sure I follow you. I mean, being out here on a mountainside, miles from everywhere, in the middle of the night, don't you think this is taking social distancing a bit too far? This is social exile. Well, we are shepherds. This is what we do. So, who are you? And what is that big gaggle group chorus? Um, host. H-O-S-T. It's a host of angels. Okay, host. Are they with you? They sh really should be social distancing. Yes, they are with me. We are very excited. We have glad tidings and super news to tell you about the birth of the Messiah down in Bethlehem. Hang on, are you guys time travelers by any chance? Or maybe you're aliens. Well, we live in such weird times, and with COVID, anything is possible. There's been a lot of strange stuff going on lately. Yeah, don't know what to believe anymore. They even say there's a crocodile that runs a guest house in Bethlehem. Shocking. They say he eats gas. Sounds like Sweeney Todd. Sounds more like COVID madness to me. What? What? He eats the guests? No, no. But listen to me. This is the truth. This newborn baby, the son of God, the bundle of joy and happiness who has been sent to save the world is the whole reason I came to you. And that very baby is staying at that crocodile guest house. Ooh, that's not good. No, not good at all. Well, we better get ourselves to Bethlehem right now and do what we do best. And no dilly dallying. We have to get some. We have some serious shepherding to do. Yes, very serious and a little different from normal. Normally, we have to stop wolves from eating the sheep. But now we gotta stop a crocodile from eating a baby. Yep, that's what we're good at. We stop things from eating things that they shouldn't eat. So. What are we waiting for? We've got to go.
looking at flightscanner.com and there are no direct flights to Bethlehem. So we have to travel override. Interesting. Why are there no flights? Is it because they're cancelled by COVID? Or maybe because airplanes haven't actually been invented yet? Look, there are so many rules and restrictions on it. It makes no difference if planes exist or not. Oh, so no? How are we going to get to Bethlehem? Well, you can't cross the border on a horse if his passport is from a third country. Elephants have to quarantine for two weeks, so they're useless. And brown Asian bears are forbidden if they have eaten a border guard in the last 10 days. What? Who even travels on a bear? I even heard of one family in Bethlehem who traveled on a crocodile. Everyone in front of them runs for their life for any problem. Hey, listen to this. Father Christmas sees a special northern reindeer with a diplomatic passport. No one ever stops him, so let's borrow Father Christmas's magical sleigh to get there. Stop! Doesn't Father Christmas come a little bit after the birth of Jesus Christ? No! God is super clever and time Jesus birth, especially in time for Christmas. For a white person, you are so not very wise. Christmas comes after Jesus' birth. The clue is in the name, Christmas. Get it? You are being way too chronological and theological and just too logical. <laughs> Look, guys, I have found three old flea bitten camels that are covered creek cleared with fault and fault of star navigation. Just point their funny little camel noses towards the star of David, and the camel will take us to Bethlehem. Much better than flying in a much smaller carbon footprint. See you. See ya. Well, looks like everything is fine, but baby is still one piece. That's good. At least he hasn't been eaten by a crocodile. Yeah, that would not have been a good start for Christmas. Look, I can see a crocodile. Get ready. On guard! Cooks are ready! Really, you don't have to end guard me. I'm not actually a real crocodile. It's just a costume. Rumor has gone completely out of hand, but I do like the thing. I've gone viral. What? You, you have COVID? No, no, no. Not that sort of viral. Social media viral. Hey, look. Why is there a monkey here? A monkey who seems to be hiding behind a cow mask. Hmm. Yes, he's a nativity monkey. Oh, in which version of the nativity? <clears throat> is there a nativity monkey? 
He's hiding. Apparently they are running out of monkeys to test the new COVID vaccine on. And the cows couldn't get here due to all the travel restrictions. So he's a nativity monkey. This is all rather surprising. Isn't the nativity supposed to have cows and sheep? This nativity has a crocodile and a nativity monkey. Well, this is an unusual year. We just have to expect the unexpected. And the birth of a baby who is a king. God sending his son as a human child to save us all is surely the most unexpected thing of all. Frankly, a monkey and a crocodile are nothing in comparison. And the birth of Christ is all about including everyone. Crocodiles and monkeys, too. Christ has come to restore all creation, all mankind and animals alike. No one is to be left out and everyone can be part of his kingdom. Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. COVID nativity. What a weird year this is. Thanks very much, Mike. Let's give um, Mike and then a round of applause for all of us. Advent is about waiting. I do not like to wait, but Israel was waiting. There were people oppressing them. There were people ruling their country who were not from their people. Things were not going well for them. We're used to waiting. It's been about a year since COVID started and we're waiting and waiting for this to be over. We are so tired of wearing masks and standing away from people, not hugging people at church, not going to church like we're used to. It's all about waiting. But there are two ways to wait. You can wait passively or actively. You can wait like a boring long school day that will just never finish. So bore a long sermon that just will never finish, don't worry. <laughs> or you can wait actively, like you wait for Christmas. You're waiting, and so you can't sleep because you're waiting. Do you see how different they are? John was calling people to wait, to prepare. Jesus is coming. We're waiting, we're waiting. But that doesn't mean we don't do anything. It means we prepare. John said to people, turn around, repent, turn away from yourself and toward God. The king is coming. He's going to rescue us. He's going to make it so that in his kingdom, there's room for everyone. Monkeys and crocodiles and everyone will be restored. And in the same way, as we're waiting for an end to COVID, we can't just passively wait. We can't just say, oh, someone will make a vaccine and make us all better. Uh, we have a part to play too, don't we? We take vaccines, we wear masks, we do all these things that we don't like doing. But we're waiting for Jesus during Advent. We're waiting for that time when he will rescue us. And we wait actively. That's what John is calling us to today. To turn to Jesus, turn away from ourselves. And look forward to that day when Jesus is finally the king. When there's no more mourning or crying or sickness or death. When the old things have been washed away, he says, and the new things have come. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's stand together and say the Benedictus. This is the song that John the Baptist's father sang when he found out that John was going to be born. We say it together. Look towards the east, O Jerusalem. 
and see the glory that is coming from God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Look towards the east, O Jerusalem, and see the glory that is coming from God. We remain standing now for the Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Lord, we bless you, we praise you. We give you thanks that you came to rescue us. We ask that you would help us to wait actively. That you would help us to prepare our hearts. We long for you to come and make everything right. We pray for our friends who are sick and our family. We pray for people we don't know who are suffering because of situations outside of their control. We pray for our families that during Advent we are drawn closer to one another and closer to you. We pray for those who are lonely, those who are separated, those who have no home they can return to. We long for the day when you will make all things right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your Son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together in whatever language or translation is closest to our hearts, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. It was such a pleasure to see the Nativity skit. And we do hope um, that many of you have already signed up for the carol service tonight. Unfortunately, uh, all the sign-ups are, all the places have been taken. And so if you would like to join us, we will be live streaming it. Um, and if you're watching online as well. We also have a sign up for the uh, Christmas Eve midnight service, which is not quite at midnight, I think. Um, but if you are interested in coming, we, we do need to sign up for that because it is quite popular. So um, Giles at the back, 
next to the door there has a sign-up sheet. Please do talk with him if you're interested in, in signing up for that. But it is important to sign up. Um, similarly, we, we have a tradition of doing a Christmas dinner for people who are away from home and can't get home for the holidays. And so, obviously this year it's going to have to be very small, very careful. Um, and so it's probably not for everyone. But if you are stuck away from home, if you're unable to return to your home because of COVID in this situation, and if you're someone who normally does celebrate Christmas on the 25th and, and can't get back to your country or where you're from, then um, please also do talk with Giles and we'll have a, a sign up for a very limited number of spaces. So if you do fall into that category, we would like to invite you. But again, it's probably not for everyone given the size that we'll, that we'll have to be. Um, we do not have coffee today. We're free to say hi to everyone after the service, but we will not be serving coffee and tea. Um, we'll, do, we'll be getting things prepared in here for the carol service tonight. Um, and the last notice, I believe, is that in the back, in the foyer, we have things for sale that we normally would have probably sold during our Christmas bazaar. But Christmassy type things, have a look, and um, Deborah will be selling them out at the table there. And birthdays. Is there anyone, I don't have a list with me, but if you're here and you had a birthday this week, this past week. I believe Nina did. Oh, <laughs> Dina did. Come on up. Please do come up and, and get a chocolate. Oh, Nina yeah. and Dina both had birthdays. This is the part of the service where everyone kind of looks at each other. <laughs> like, you do want, no, 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 I don't want you. Happy birthday. And if you are watching online, um, happy birthday to you if, it was this, if your birthday was this week. No other notices? I've, forgot, I've forgotten nothing, I hope. Okay. Great. <clears throat> then, Christ, our exalted King, pour upon you his abundant gifts and bring you to reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.